Hey there folks, and watch this video where I'm going to be looking back on the first week of the Dakar Rally, and, well, it has been quite a week, especially in the bike category. We have seen so many different retirements from up and down the order, from past winners such as Sam Sunderland to people who we consider contenders such as uh, Lopez, for example. Overall in the bikes, we see Ricky Brabeck has got a lead of 51 seconds from Ross Branch, who was leading for quite a lot of the early part of the rally. The lead is 51 seconds, which is more than the difference of bonuses and penalties that both riders have picked up, with Adrian Van Beveren in third. The bikes category is continuing to be a massively contentious category, while it's one that you can see a lot of battles going on up and down the order. Top 5 is rounded out by uh, Corneo Flamino and uh, Toby Price with Kevin Benavidez and Luciano Benavidez uh, both within the top 10 and Chucky Sanders also inside of there with the top 10 rounded out by Svitko. So these are all names that are quite familiar if you've been following Dakar for the past few years. But yeah, it's been a big battle up and down that order. In the bikes, it started off with Medeiros taking a nice run up at the top and Varga competing quite well. But over the course of the week, the two contenders in the previous several editions have come back again and again and again. Andy and Giroud are the top two, both of them an hour clear of Medeiros in third. And with 20 minutes of the gap between these two, it will come down to who gets unstuck the least in the final week move on to the trucks now and Van Kastren was a top contender right from the outset however issues over the course of the chrono stage have meant that uh, that Machik in the other Ivico has jumped up into the lead at the same time Lepry has been there and thereabouts as he has been the past couple of editions but it was really the chrono test that separated Machik from the rest of the field he now has a lead of an hour in that category, as other people have been dropping by the wayside. We've seen issues for all kinds of different runners and riders in that category. In the SSVs, and Desultrite has been doing really well in the non-W2RC entry for Seb Loeb Racing. But it has been an impressive debut for Sarah Price, who's second, and Sedan is the sort of beacon of hope for Saudi contenders. He's in the lead by 2 minutes 58 at the halfway point. In the challenges, it was the Gottschall family who came out of the starting blocks and were running off into the distance. They locked out the podium for the early part of the week. But different issues for <laughs> the two elder members of the family have meant that it's only the youngest one, the teenager Eric, who is in the top three now. Or even in the top five. With Mitchy Guffrey having had a rough start and picking back up with a couple of different wins to get into second place, and Christina Gutierrez, who was affected by issues on the very first test last year, jumping up into the overall podium. Gutierrez Lopez and Jones rounding out the top five, but it is the Tauruses who have been contending for the win throughout the event. The Irish Canam is fourth and then fifth. And then in the cars category, I was talking about Sedan as the leading Saudi hope, but for a long time Yazid Al Raji was actually leading the event. He crashed out in the first part of the chrono test, a massive accident. And what that's meant is that Carlos Sainz has got into the lead at the halfway point for Matthias Ekstrom, with Seb Lerb in third, Mirage in fourth, and Demuview in fifth. That means in the top five, the only person who's won an edition of the Dakar before is the leader, Carlos Sainz. 20 minutes to lead over his Audi teammate. I believe this is the final year of Audi's programme in the Dakar, so they would want to be leaving on a high and showing that Electric Power can actually win in a rally raid competition such as the Dakar. The next highest previous Dakar winner is Janil Davillier, who is in 6th place. Prokops in 7th, outperforming the M Sport debutants. Uh, Nani Roma is the highest M Sport contender in 12th place. But there are a large amount of Toyotas, it's surprising none of them are on the podium, but given that some of them were early on, it shows the issues that have been affecting the Toyota Kazoo Racing and the Overdrive Racing entries. 
And if you're looking for the ultimate overall standings, the top three are all cars. Carlos Sainz is just under the 25 hour mark at the end of the first week of competitive action, whereas the leading bikes are around the 27 hour mark. In the past, when it was the traditional kind of Paris Dakar rally, it would be a lot closer and you'd usually see some of the bikes up towards the front end that carried on as we moved to Latin America. However, since we've moved to Saudi Arabia, it has been the cars that have tended to be the faster competitors. Let me know your thoughts or any kind of comments in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.